Hey y'all, I have a pretty cool update to share on my 3D engine. So I now have the ability to create a model in Blender, export that out into OBJ format, and then import it into my engine. Before I import the data, I do have a Python script that I run, which will do a little bit of cleanup and create a binary file that I read in. But this is going to save me a lot of time um, I'll go ahead and show uh, the process and, and demo some other things in this video. I can uh, now scale meshes and translate them. And the uh, perspective projection is a little better than the previous video, so that's been improved a little bit. I haven't done any optimizations yet. I'm, I'm really going to leave that probably to last, to be honest, unless there's something very obvious that I can tweak as I go. Um, throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to be uh, showing the process using a textured cube instead of this mesh, simply because there's less data to, you know, to look at and digest. So with that said, let's have a look at the process. This is a cube that I textured in Blender. So Blender's axes are defined such that Y is forward and Z is up. My engine is using a left-hand system where Z is forward, Y is up. So I tinkered a bit with how to get these models exported out of Blender along with the UV texture mapping and, and have this get recreated in, in the 3DO and have it look more or less the same. And I found a pretty good process after um, quite a bit of experimenting. So at first when I was exporting the file, I was trying to change the axes, but that just made things worse because it, it performed rotations, which isn't really what I needed. So this is pretty much my process. When I model, I start, start out by looking down the positive Y axis, and this is going to be the front of whatever it is that I'm, that I'm building. Next, I, I name the material after the texture that I'm going to use. So that is the link between texture and model. So in the 3DO, in this case, loads in this mesh, it's going to look for text002.cell. So that's my link there. On the left, you can see the, the UV mapping um, or the texture for this cube. It's all one texture uh, subdivided up into different parts. And if I click on some of the different faces, you can see the areas within the texture light up. Uh, something that's a little subtle, but um, I had to account for is that um, on the UV coordinates, the x-axis ascends from the left, so you get from 0 to 1, but it's flipped for y. So you start out at 1 up here, and then it goes to 0 down here. So I pretty much just do uh, you know 1 minus the value to, to flip it back up. Um, so when I export this data out, I do have a secondary step, which is I run a Python script on the Wavefront OBJ file that I export. And this script will convert the axes for me, so it will turn it into a left-hand system mesh um, with clockwise um, ordering of the vertices. It will do some massaging on the UV coordinates, and it will export to a binary file just enough of what I need to rebuild this. So it doesn't have a lot of stuff that, that gets injected into an OBJ file, which we'll look at in a second. So if I go to export this, I will choose to keep the forward axis and the up axis the same as Blender uses, so I don't trip up my, my script. Uh, apply modifiers if I have any. Include the UV coordinates. By default, normals are checked, but I, I deselect that because I calculate the normals myself um, since meshes can move around. And then the materials, yes, we want to we want to export that as well. And then where I want to save it, so I'll I'll just overwrite my old one here, export. And then now let's uh, have a quick look at the file, and then followed by the importing process. Here is the OBJ file that we exported out of Blender. And the main lines that my, my parser is interested in are V for vertex, VT for the vertex texture coordinates, and F for face. So V, all these V entries here, this is a distinct set 
of vertices that were exported out of Blender. So for example, if you have multiple uh, points of a model that are sharing the same vertex, you, that vertex would only be listed here one time. VT for the, the UV mapping, you have your X and your Y pair or your U and your V pairs. And again, this is a distinct set of all the different UV mappings that, that were exported. And F face, this is what ties everything together. So you can see that there are four sets of pairs of numbers because we're dealing with quads. So this is like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of the quad. And this first number is an index into the vertex list. So one would be this first entry, which is 111. The second number is the index into the texture mapping in, uh, list. So one would be the first entry, 0 0.3 and 0 0.02, and so forth. So the second point of the quad here would have an index of five into the vertex list. So that would be here, minus 111, and then 13, the 13th entry into the vertex texture list, and so on. So this file, this data, is still in Blender's, uh, you know, axes-defined format. And I believe this is all counterclockwise um, ordering. So the script that I wrote, the Python script that I wrote that ingests this and creates the ultimate uh, file, the binary file for my engine, will go ahead and clean some of these things up. So the first thing it does is it swaps the the y and z axis uh, values for the vertices. It will, given the um, the UV coordinates, it will determine the texture x and y location and the width and the height for cropping uh, parts of a texture out for the cell. So it'll take care of that for me. And it'll include the this material name, which is the link to the texture to use. So it'll look for the text002.cell file for the texture mapping. So if I run my Python script here, um, let me remove the old file so we can generate a new one. So I run my parser and I'll point to the, I'll point to the raw OBJ format file here, run that. And you can see that it found six quads that matches. Here's the material name. That's all good. And then here are the six groups of pieces of information that I'm writing. So at this point, all the values are in fixed point because that's what I need on the 3D. I can't use floats. And the ordering of the quads that are being built here are all going clockwise now. And the, the Y and Z have been swapped. And then here you can see the, the texture information. So upper left X, Y of the texture, and then the width and the height uh, to crop. Now, this is mostly for just being verbose and seeing what's actually happening. It's not actually writing out like this string of text when it creates the binary file. It's literally just writing out the bytes that, that it needs. And so here, cube dot dot dat this is what just got created and um, 398 bytes of data was written so now what I do is I go ahead and I move cube dot dat into the assets folder right here and that's what um, my engine will read from when I load it in through code. So now we can have a look at that part. All right, so let's get this cube loaded up. So I have this load function that I wrote that loads in the binary files that we talked about. And I'll replace sign with cube. Let's go ahead and rebuild this. And here we are. So 
the textures are matching uh, what we saw in Blender. I can move the cube around and translate it around. That's pretty cool. I can um, have it rotate on more than one axis. So let's do um, let's do X and Y. There we go. And I can also scale it. So this might look a little weird. It almost looks like the the model is moving in and out, but it's actually growing and shrinking. Yeah, so pretty cool, pretty cool progress. Um, I, I'm almost ready to have a free looking camera. So right now the camera is still fixed looking down the positive Z direction uh, at the origin of the world. But um, by next video, I'll be able to have more manipulation of the camera itself. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know. And until next time.